Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is Sunday, March 21st, 2021. Let's talk about a unique situation, and it's unique, in the welterweight division. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now you have two of, in fact, three of the most highly regarded fighters in the entire sport in the welterweight division right now, right? You have Hall of Fame Emeritus. In other words, we know this guy's going to be a Hall of Famer as soon as he's eligible. Titles in several weight classes. Still, some of the fastest hands in all of boxing. Some of the best legs in all of boxing. They asked Keith Thurman about him. By the way, you see, you know, the uh, family dynamic here in the background. Dad's making a video. People are still talking in the room. Okay, whatever. We'll deal with that. But let me just say this. Keith Thurman, who fought Manny Pacquiao, was recently asked about Pacquiao, and he basically said, look, you know, the guy hits incredibly hard. Incredibly hard. This is Pacquiao in his 40s. Now, I would say he's one of the most highly regarded fighters in the entire sport of boxing. Couple that with Errol Spence, who proved me wrong in his fight against Mikey Garcia. Spence has a great jab. Spence has movement. But when Spence wants, he can be a short-range, deep-in-the-pocket assassin. Then, of course, you have the fighter who I personally consider to be the best in the sport pound for pound, Terrence Crawford. As I've said here before, Terrence Crawford is like watching the NFL's New England Patriots. He's a different fighter depending on who he's fighting, right? He's fighting Kell Brook. Think about how fast Kell Brook is, right? Kell Brook has lightning hands. And somehow Terrence Crawford during the fight was able to change stance, literally go from one hand to the other hand in a stance against one of the faster fighters in boxing. Right, Crawford, for those keeping track, has beaten both Amir Khan, another guy with very quick hands, and of course, Cal Brook. Right, Crawford has beaten many others Understand, Crawford, an argument can be made, was at his best when he was undisputed at Junior Welter. Now he's in the welterweight division, he's still unbeaten. And he has one of the belts. Well, into this mix and the highlights of the fight, his recent fight, which took place yesterday, are in my favorites folder. Into this mix is the best prospect I know of in the sport of boxing. And that's Virgil Ortiz, right folks? You look at Ortiz and you have to start asking the question, how would he do against Manny Pacquiao, against Errol Spence, against Terrence Crawford, right? Understand these are three of the best in the sport but this prospect, and I place him ahead of fighters like Ryan Garcia, Shakur Stevenson, right? I think this is the prospect to watch, right? I think this guy is a guy who, if you're a gambler, and I know this is an anathema to many, right? I. <laughs> I was reading comments here online today. I understand many of you like to take favorites, but this is the guy who, because he's going to be an underdog against any of the other three, even in Texas, where Errol Spence is from, I believe Virgil Ortiz would be an underdog. 
I believe that if a fight is announced, part of your bet, maybe the main part of your bet, has to be on Virgil Ortiz. I think it's an open question. Let's talk about it. Right? Ortiz looks big for 147. The fact that Terrence Crawford was champion at 140, the fact that Terrence Crawford is in his 30s now, the fact that Terrence Crawford never had, even though he's beating guys with blinding hand speed, Crawford's never had blinding hand speed himself. Right? The fact that Crawford has had some rough and tumble fights. David Benavides, his brother, gave Crawford all he could handle for several rounds. Right? Several rounds. I think that opens the door to a young lion who is very aggressive. I mean very aggressive on his front foot. In this fight against Maurice Hooker, you're going to notice in the last two rounds, Virgil Ortiz has his head right up on Maurice Hooker's chin. He's very aggressive. He can collapse the pocket. One wonders what would happen if he got Manny Pacquiao backing up. He'd certainly try. Let me say this, though. Ortiz's best punch, and he's one of boxing's most withering body punchers. His body punching is A-level. It's spectacular. But I would argue that Ortiz's best punch, and it's one he does not rely on, is his jab. You see it here, it changes the hooker fight. It changes the Brad Solomon fight. In this Hooker fight, Hooker's doing his best, backing up, trying to cover his ribs. He's forcing the fight. He's lingering. He's forcing the fight to go rounds. But then Ortiz cracks him up top with a stiff. It's a Carlos Monzon level jab. It's a battering ram. A stiff jab. And it looks like it almost gives Hooker whiplash. Hooker's not the same after getting hit with that jab. The fight ends moments later. Right now, I'll agree. There are many questions here. Virgil Ortiz has not faced the level of opposition that the other guys have faced. Let's just be real. Right? I would argue that Errol Spence has a jab and has a back foot game that would present problems for Virgil Ortiz. The fight Errol Spence fought against Mikey Garcia, I imagine, would be the fight he would try to fight against Virgil Ortiz. Have Virgil Ortiz walk into jabs. Right? But here's the kicker. Understand, Ortiz is so good that you'll notice his defense is much better than advertised. Right? I'm not going to say he's Pernell Whitaker defensively. Right? He's too offensive for that. But my goodness, I believe the guy would get Spence on his back foot. I think Spence would try to force him to walk into jabs, then Spence would find him much harder to hit than Mikey Garcia. Let's face it too, Mikey Garcia, like Terrence Crawford, is a guy who came up from the lighter weights. I believe Virgil Ortiz might have a bigger frame than Mikey Garcia. Let me also say too that because Virgil Ortiz looks up to Errol Spence, because they're from the same part of the country, I believe they're both from Texas, 
I believe Virgil Ortiz has dreamt about and focused on what he would do if he ever got in a fight against Errol Spence. So let me just say, you have a unique situation here. Danny Garcia has left the division. I know Sean Porter wants a fight against the elites in the division, but the elites saw that Sean Porter, Errol Spence fight. And many of you here online, let's be real, thought Sean Porter won that fight. And I'm guessing Manny Pacquiao is not in a rush to fight Sean Porter. I'm guessing Terrence Crawford is not in a rush to fight Sean Porter. I'm guessing if Virgil Ortiz had a chance to fight guys with belts, right? Crawford, Errol Spence, Manny Pacquiao, he would bypass Sean Porter, right? I'll agree that Porter can fight up close, can turn a fight. Porter it can be sudden. Right? Porter's outside. Oh, Porter's inside. Right? Porter can trade with you up close. But I will say I don't believe Sean Porter has anything close to Virgil Ortiz's power. In other words, if Ortiz hit Errol Spence as much as Sean Porter did, I think Errol Spence would have been stopped. So I know I'm sounding crazy. What else is new? Right? I'm not saying here with any degree of certainty, any degree of certainty, that Virgil Ortiz beats Pacquiao, who would surprise him with suddenness and power. Right? And hand speed. I'm not saying that the young guy beats the big three, Pacquiao, Spence, Crawford. But let's just say he has enough of a chance where if any of those fights are announced, and understand, Ortiz wants what he calls the best at welter. If any of those fights are announced, I'm probably gonna take Ortiz, the underdog. Then I'll think about what the hedge is. Right? Let's just say I would not expect Errol Spence to even consider trying to fight this young stallion in the pocket. That's not going to happen. Right? I'm guessing Terrence Crawford would understand that he cannot deal with this young man's shots to the body, right? The three wise men would have to use experience and savvy to stay out of the pocket, to not get hit with body shots, and to somehow find a way to not get hit with Ortiz's jab. I'm telling you, the jab's his best punch. Right? Ortiz's jab. And they would have to find a way to leverage their experience to prevent this young guy from getting going. Let me also say this too. Ortiz has no experience going deep in fights. Now, I've seen this before. In the 1980s, there was a lion in the jungle. His name was Julian Jackson. Jackson looked like a paradigm shift. I encourage everyone here to Google Julian Jackson fights. He was tremendous. Nobody wanted to fight him. He hit so hard, you would see guys hit the canvas and they'd be twitching on the canvas. He hit so hard that he would hit guys and you'd be screaming at the TV. Referee, stop the fight. Well, there was a champion, Mikey McCallum. Right? And McCallum understood 
that he needed to fight this young guy before this young guy became Godzilla. Right? I believe McCallum, who is kind of like Terrence Crawford in terms of dissecting fights and stuff like that. I believe McCallum also understood that Julian Jackson was a mid-range hooker. Right? So I believe McCallum watched the tape and understood he had a chance. Well, the old vet then fought the young lion and beat him. Right? It was interesting at the time. Understand, McCallum, who used to call himself the body snatcher, to this day is one of the best fighters I've ever seen at any weight class. Right? So there was a period there in the 1980s where Julian Jackson had one loss. And you understood that one loss was to a great fighter. Right? The old guard has to ask themselves whether they want to wait to fight Virgil Ortiz, wait for Ortiz to actually get even more experience, fight guys who are better than Maurice Hooker. Let's face it, Maurice Hooker really wasn't a welterweight. Right? Do you want to fight him now? Or do you want to fight him when he's an absolute terror? I could see an Errol Spence deciding, okay, I'm going to fight him. I'm going to force him to stay outside early. And then, in the 8th, ninth, 10th rounds, rounds where Virgil Ortiz hasn't been, I'm going to find out exactly how much stamina this guy has. If you allow him to learn the trade, to actually get experience in the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th rounds, if you allow him to learn how to win fights in ways other than by knockout, if you wait and fight him later, the improvement in his game between now and then could give him the advantage. I believe, too, these fighters need to realize, Errol Spence in particular, that if he moves to 154, because Errol Spence is big for the division, he might still have to deal with Virgil Ortiz. Because eventually Ortiz is going to gain some weight and he's going to be up at 154. So don't you want to get him when he's young, when he's less experienced? Because I'm just telling boxing. You're not going to want to deal with this guy when he has more experience, when he has more fights, when he's had to pace himself in the later rounds, when he figures out exactly how to use that A-plus jab. I'm telling you, there are many fighters who, if they had this guy's jab, would just live behind it. Right? That's how I see it. I believe this bet makes itself. I know those words got me in trouble in the Lawrence O'Coley fight. Okay, fine. But I believe here, when you're getting this level of talent, and in my opinion, this guy is the best prospect in the sport. Right? That's how, I, I don't know how emphatic I can be here. If you're getting the best prospect in the sport at underdog odds, I believe you need to take that. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. In the Maurice Hooker fight, just understand, both of these guys are from the same part of the country. Just understand that after an interesting beginning, over time, Virgil Ortiz realizes that he can get inside on Maurice Hooker and load up on his body. He's prepared to take some punches to get inside. And that's important, right? Because I would say you might not be able to do that against Manny Pacquiao. 
right? Pacquiao hits that hard. And so once Ortiz makes the decision that he's willing to take some punches to land his body shots, and once he's able to then flick a jab in between the body shots, Maurice Hooker was done, right? Done. I'll agree Errol Spence hits hard. I don't think Errol Spence is going to want to have a fight in the pocket like Maurice Hooker ended up having the last three rounds of this Virgil Ortiz fight. I think he's going to force Virgil Ortiz to try to find him. Right? And all I'm saying is all bets are off at that point. The young guy might do exactly that. That's how I see it. I'm expecting Virgil Ortiz to be an underdog against Pacquiao. Against Spence. Against Crawford. Right? I'm trying to maximize my rate of return. Ortiz, the underdog simply to win, would definitely be part of my betting portfolio. That's how I see it. Against Pacquiao, the hedge for me would be Pacquiao by KO. Because Pacquiao, Pacquiao might hit the hardest out of the three guys. Right? Um, I'd have to look at what's being offered in the Crawford and Spence fights. But if you get one takeaway from this video, it's to keep an eye on Virgil Ortiz. Phenomenal prospect. There is a chance that this guy spends the next seven years unifying the welterweight division. Let's say welterweight and 154. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.